Why, hello there, handsome and sexy stranger. Welcome to my house. You look weary and like you have traveled from far away. Did you travel through the icy swamps? You also look cold. Why don't you come lie down with me and maybe we can snuggle together? Hmm. <laughs> oh, I really gotta stop flirting with my own audience. Anyway, welcome to another video in which I ramble about stuff. It has been a while since I have um, done one of these unscripted videos. Though I suppose this one is not completely unscripted since I kind of wrote a mini script for this. Either way, um, some of you may have noticed that I do not really do social media like Twitter or Facebook. And yes, there is actually a reason for that. Uh, believe it or not, but I actually used to be on platforms like Twitter, but I'm not on there anymore. And today I want to talk a bit about um, why this is and why I tend to avoid most social media like the plague. Um, as, a, as a little side note, I'm going to be talking mostly about the BIRD website, aka Twitter. But, it, but I think that a lot of the things that I will be talking about can be applied to other social media as well. Like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and um, this hellscape, YouTube. I think a good starting point would be to discuss my own past with social media. Since this will give us some context for why I am making my observations in the first place. So... I used to be active on a lot of larger social media hubs like Facebook, Tumblr and Twitter and I used to interact on these sites quite often and I would often spend hours browsing them and engaging with other users. However, in 2015 I decided to delete almost every social media account that I had and basically remove myself from the internet. There is a very long story for why I did this, but to keep it short, the main reason I did this was because using these sites was having a seriously awful effect on my mental health. I was fighting with people online constantly and I was just not taking care of myself mentally. At some point I was so fed up with everything that I basically pulled a plug and just decided to remove myself from these sites and honestly? In regards to my mental health, was this probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. So, after 2014, I spent a long time period where I was just not on large social media hubs anymore. Sure, I watched YouTube videos, but that was about it. It's actually only after I began making YouTube videos again that I began using these hubs again. I sometimes browse Twitter accounts from friends or certain specific online content creators, but even this indirect usage is something I already regret and something I have since then really stopped doing. At the time when I deleted my accounts back in 2014, I couldn't really formulate it why I hated using these social media sites so much, but now that I'm older and hopefully wiser, I can maybe give a bit more words to not just my own emotions, but also the insidious way that a lot of these sites work. So one thing I noticed using these sites myself is that they tend to have a very addictive quality, at least for me. Now this could be because I'm eternally unemployed, but often when I had nothing to do, I would often find myself browsing these social media sites looking for more input, if you will. Usually the enjoyment I would get from doing this was quite minimal, but for some reason I could not really pull myself away from this. Even nowadays I often find myself browsing subreddits on my phone, mostly related to video games or memes when I'm bored. The pull here is admittedly a bit less strong, but it's definitely still there. And I think this is related to the algorithm. So, every one of these sites, including YouTube, are governed by something called the algorithm. 
This is the code base behind the website that observes your internet browsing behavior and selects posts that are specifically tailored for you based on that behavior. Side note, this is how most of these companies make their money since they sell your personal info acquired by this to advertisers. This algorithm often uses a lot of psychological tricks in regard to catering to your tastes to keep you coming back and engaged. While these tricks are probably not quite as insidious as something like loot boxes in video games, they're not exactly harmless either and this addictive quality can be a big problem for some people. It is extremely attracting and some people that are distracting and some people that are susceptible to this, to this kind of input can be easily exploited by companies or like bad faith actors like this. Which brings me to talk about the dreaded discourse. I have often stated in the past that I'm not a huge fan of the type of discussions and conversations that are often held among left wing people in places like Twitter. And the algorithm plays a big role in why. You see, the more you interact with a social media platform, the more data they can extract from you, and thus the more money they can make of you. So algorithms will stimulate you to drive that engagement, to keep that discussion going. Unfortunately, this also means that the platform is basically telling you that you have to discuss literally everything in a very specific way, and they are rewarding you for it. This is a method of discord that really tends to skew discussions about subjects in a bad way, in my opinion. It stimulates people to become extremely defensive about everything they talk about, even, would it, if, even if it would be in their best interest to concede and recognize that they were wrong about the subject. You see there's a lot of Twitter with the so-called bad takes, where people will say the most weird and nonsensical statement to either defend their position or to make a point about a subject just because they feel that it should be talked about. Now, here's my hot take of the day. Not every subject warrants a discussion and sometimes better to just leave things be or just to walk away from something. Sometimes a lamp is not a lamp and not a bourgeois counter-revolutionary device. Now, this would be bad enough if this was confined to social media platforms on their own, but because so many people spend all day interacting with each other like this, they kind of forget how to discuss things in good faith in real life. This constant discourse and the need to have a take about everything just tends to skew the way a lot of people think about and interact with the world around them. And honestly, I don't think this is a good development. Now, of course, as a YouTube content creator and a literal armchair activist, I would say that creating takes and stimulating discourse is kind of my job. So you could make the argument that it would be hypocritical of, uh, of me to make this argument. However, I will definitely admit that there are more than a few subjects out there that I either have no opinion about or just don't know enough about to really have a strong opinion about it. If I don't know enough about a subject, then I'm not going to proclaim that I'm the expert on the subject and kind of dig myself into a deep metaphorical hole. Another thing that I really noticed using social media is the constant input and the constant stream of information. It was like really overwhelming at the time. This is less of an issue nowadays, now that I've learned about the ins and outs of my own mental health problems and I've learned to recognize how to deal with these own troubles. But back in my pre-2014 days, was this a big problem? I was going through a lot of mental health problems and stress, so to be constantly bombardment, bombarded with what was essentially pointless information was not exactly a helping factor, so, so to say. Even nowadays, I still have moments where I just have to shut everything off and take a moment for, my, for myself. Because if I continue, then I know I would be going insane. Back then, however, I often felt like I wanted to claw my own skull open, grab my own brain out and splatter it against the wall. Just because it kept churning and churning and churning and thinking and thinking and thinking and there was just no end to it. Basically, the point of being alive made it physically very painful for me. Which, as you can imagine, is not exactly a good mental state to be in. So yeah, um... That roughly, roughly sums up why I stopped using social media. And honestly, it's a decision I do not really regret. It was just such a mess to constantly participate in and I just didn't see the point of it anymore. I was just bullying myself doing something I did not want to do. 
with people I did not like on a platform that only forced me to do these things. Like, why would I subject myself to these conditions when my time was much better spent taking care of myself and developing myself? I know that I'm sounding a bit like a grumpy old non-binary person here, so to balance things out, I will list one of the things I actually like about social media. I think it's a good way of spreading news. Often, people on the ground can report almost instantly on the situation, and I doubt that we would have known about certain subjects and events if they were not reported on, on Twitter. So yeah, it's good for that, I suppose. But yeah, that uh, wraps it up. I still don't have an outro for these kinds of videos, so the end? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Also, read my blog.